welcome back to the Turn and Burn UK channel. Uh, it's me, B Matthews, and you're currently watching Andy um, producing shavings uh, on a sycamore bowl that we're going to work on together today as a collaboration piece. Um, as you'll see, it, this was recorded actually on the 75th anniversary VE Day celebration um, day the 8th of May and uh, he's just shaping the outside of the bowl and um, what we're going to do is uh, work on this as a collaboration and we'll split away in a minute and show you how I do the design bit so uh, just uh... so what I've done here I've drawn around the actual blank to give me an idea of size I know that it's going to be smaller um, but I'm just leaving, giving myself a, a bit of an idea of what I'm going to actually produce on this piece. It will be pyrography and um, a bit of airbrush work today. So uh, I've come up with a design. I didn't want to put poppies on because I think of them more as um, Remembrance Day for November. So I've gone with the Union flag. A um, bit of a fly past, and I'm going to be doing some modern calligraphy. Um, Gemma Millie, I went and spent a morning. Um, my friend Gavin took me and uh, spent a very pleasant morning learning about modern calligraphy, and it's been very useful. And uh, I didn't do this on actually on screen because I didn't want to show you me going wrong. So, <laughs> but so just a. Uh, get an idea of the dates and splitting back now to Andy he's just getting the shaping for the front of the bowl and uh, you'll see that he will be sanding in a minute but this bowl changes shape when you come cut back to me um, I didn't like the sharp shoulders between the bowl and the rim uh, I wanted that more of a blended shoulder into the bowl uh, for this particular design and so uh, it does change shape so Andy's got his full PPE on and uh, just sanding here the extractions running but it was a nice it was a nice shape but yeah, I didn't want that for this design. So this is a finished shape. It was a nice bowl. Um, lovely piece of timber anyway. And uh, he's left the tenon on at the back. That's um, just to help later on with finishing. And here I've transferred the design. And uh, I've used transfer paper. This is a chalky blue. It's not a wax paper. And uh, as you've seen me do calligraphy before I've just whizzed through this bit um, but I've just used the skew point on the actual logo and that will mean that when I come to stain the stains won't run so much and I'm just wiping over with a tack cloth that just gets rid of the transfer uh, powder so uh, and I've just gone over with white on that VE day and uh, I'm using a small flat brush to uh, stain that that part. At the moment you'll see we're using the royal blue. But I find a, a small flat brush ideal for this kind of work. And you can go right up to the pyrography. And the stain doesn't travel.
so we're just about ready now to start masking off I haven't actually got any masking film and uh, due to the lockdown and the fact I just wanted to get this piece done I was quite excited to do it I've just used some scabby masking tape we found in the shed and you see that I've just transferred the line to the union flag and uh, masking it off now this tape is really quite ropey but we go ahead um, spraying this uh, royal blue and the blue um, spirit stain and also using azure um, acrylic iridescent paint all by chestnut products um, we use their products a lot we like them it's not that we have paid sponsorship um, we pay for all our our bits but uh, I do like them there's a permanency and uh, depth of color that we like and you can't go wrong with their finishes uh, we know what we're getting and we know how to use it and it suits our style of work so that's why we use them a lot and uh, so now I'm just going around I've sprayed the red you can see how nice and deep those colors are um, I do get some overspray and uh, I'll be sorting that out as I go along and uh, just going to spray I mean I, I use even use the cut off from the um, original design um, on the paper just to help me with masking and uh, I see that I'm just using the white but I do actually go back over the clouds with some airbrush opaque white um, this isn't by uh, chestnut this is by uh, Vallejo and uh, it's just a little bit more opaque and just helps with the uh, the clouds um, but it, I do go over um, the stripes on the on the flag and over the VE day symbol as well um, just with the iridescent paints all in the same colours so red on red blue on blue um, but it just gives them a nice sheen and I can fade that in with a brush they're very translucent we still see the grain of the wood which is quite nice um, I go back over the planes and the writing um, just with the pyrography uh, that's one of the last things that I do before I hand over to Andy to, to do the finishing. But um, this is just uh, showing me going over. You can see that the um, the depth of colour is just getting a bit stronger now. With my um, I don't put it through I don't put it through the airbrush that often um, because of the particles mainly. Um, and I wanted a, a nice deep colour and I just thought actually it's easier to do it with a brush and there we are and just going back over now with the pyro once you've burnt it once you've got the design there it's not infilled it's just a bit of just a overspray really so over to Andy, I've done my bit and he's just uh, going to put some cellulose sanding sealer on. You'll notice when he sprays, he sprays over beyond the piece and stops the spray beyond. So he's not getting build up on the edges of the um, of the work. And I'm just trying to balance it. Remember, he's still got the um, tenon on the back. So he's just trying to balance there. And... This is how we finish all the colour pieces. Um, so it gets cellular sanding sealer, uh, denibbed, just back with uh, a Niweb pad, uh, more balancing act. And then he's using acrylic gloss lacquer. Um, the reason for that is there's um, UV filters and that helps to protect the colours, uh, gives them a little bit more longevity. And then it's back on the lathe, 
just put it on. It's made a, a homemade um, friction plate. And uh, so he'll put the work up just to take the um, tenon off. And uh, he'll bring up the tailstock just to hold it in place. And he'll nibble away at the tenon until he's got it as small as he can on there. And then you'll see later he takes it off and sands sands away um, the remains of the tenon um, but not before grinding it as small as he can quick slap of coffee sorry right and you can see there that it, there's quite a shine already um, but uh, once he um, once he's done this, he'll done this removal. He'll he'll get the buffing system out, and uh, you'll really see the piece come to life. Got to get everything comfortable and safe and locked down. Taking off the um, homemade friction plate, and you'll see there that Andrew's only got a small piece of the tenon left, and he's going to sand that back. And he'll go through the grits just to get a, a good finish on the back. It's as important on the back as it is on the front, so uh, you'll just see him there sanding that off. And then uh, the next thing he'll do is get the buffing system out and uh, he'll buff this to a good shine. So while Andy just finishes using the uh, buffing dome in the bowl, if you've liked watching this video and want to see more, then please like, subscribe, tick the notification bell, and you'll know when we're downloading the next video. Um, we'll put links to people we've mentioned and products used in the description. But until next time, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.